There are three rules of multiplication. The first one is, when you multiply two positive numbers, you will get a positive number. The second one is, when you multiply a positive and a negative number, you will get a negative number. And the third one is, when you multiply two negative numbers, you will get a positive number. What if I told you that one of them is completely wrong, and no one in this world has ever noticed it for centuries? Multiplication is an indirect form of addition. Let's take this simple example. 4 multiplied by 3 equals 12. You have to add the number 4 3 times to get 12. So 4 is the amount and 3 is the number of times to be added. Let's take the second rule. Minus 4 multiplied by 3 equals minus 12. You have to add the number minus 4 3 times to get minus 12. So minus 4 is the amount and 3 is the number of times to be added. But what about this third one? Minus 4 multiplied by minus 3 equals 12. Minus 4 is the amount and minus 3 is the number of times to be added. But the question is, how can number of times be negative? It is impossible. Let's say for example we are comparing the speed of a red car and a blue car. And I say that the red car is 3 times faster than the blue car. This would be a logical statement. But if I say that the red car is minus 3 times faster than the blue car, it will not make any sense. It would be an illogical statement. And if number of times can never be negative, then how can the product of two negative numbers give a positive number? In fact, the whole equation doesn't make any sense. It is a complete nonsense. But now this incorrectness, or should I say a lie, in one of the rules of multiplication actually give birth to a famous topic in mathematics and that is complex numbers. To understand complex numbers, let me give you an example. 3 multiplied by 3 equals 9. So the square root of 9 is 3. 4 multiplied by 4 equals 16. So the square root of 16 is 4. And 1 multiplied by 1 equals 1. So the square root of 1 is 1. But what is the square root of minus 9? What is the square root of minus 16? And what is the square root of minus 1? No one had any answer for this. At that time, mathematicians all over the world became really confused by this anomaly, since according to them, the product of two negative numbers will give a positive number. So there is no way that the square root of a negative number will also give a negative number. They could not figure out where the mistake was. Surprisingly, they started accepting this anomaly and many of them even started naming it. They called it as imaginary number and it was denoted as I. The term imaginary was first coined by René Descartes in 1637, although it was really difficult for him to define some numbers as imaginary and he said, sometimes only imaginary, that is one can imagine as many as I said in each equation but sometimes there exists no quantity that matches that which we imagine. In 1748, Leonard Euler, another famous mathematician, even went further. He combined trigonometric function with exponential function using complex numbers. He obtained a formula for so-called complex analysis and the formula is cos theta plus i sin theta equals e to the power i theta. I don't mean to offend anyone, but from what point of view you make a relationship between a trigonometric function and an exponential function and also include square root of minus 1 in that? What is the logic behind? This whole equation doesn't make any sense at all. There is one more strange equation given by Euler and that is e to the power i pi plus 1 equals 0. Again, what is the logic behind this? How can you combine a natural number with an exponential function which also includes square root of minus 1 and then you say the result is a 0? How can you say that? If you are considering something as real and something as imaginary, how can you mix both of them together? What is the logic behind? Euler didn't stop there. He thought that the product rule 
square root of a multiplied by square root of b equals square root of ab is valid regardless whether a and b are positive or negative. But it is completely wrong. This product rule is valid only if you consider positive numbers. When you apply negative numbers, it becomes invalid. It makes no sense. And do you know why? Because mathematicians could not figure out that there could be a mistake in one of the rules of multiplication. There is a very old saying, a little knowledge is a very dangerous thing. It is better not to know anything rather than knowing just something. Because when you know just something, you will always make a false conclusion out of it. And that's exactly what these great mathematicians did. Instead of investigating where the mistake was, they started accepting the lie that the product of two negative numbers will always give a positive number. And because of their ignorance that the theory of complex numbers took on a life of its own and still refuses to die. It is no surprise that complex numbers is fake mathematics. But great mathematicians like Euler, Gauss, Riemann, Cauchy encouraged everyone to use complex numbers in a really confident way. And because of that, people started using them in almost every field of science and mathematics. From control theory to fluid dynamics, from electrical engineering to quantum mechanics, everywhere you will find complex numbers. Everywhere you will find square root of minus one, which is completely a fake mathematics. It's really surprising to see that the fundamental equation of quantum mechanics starts with a complex number. Schrodinger's famous equation also has this quantity i, which is square root of minus 1. And in the real world, there is no such thing called a square root of minus 1. It is because of a mistake in one of the rules of multiplication. And surprisingly, this small mistake has created such a big influence in mathematics history that people started considering complex numbers just as real numbers and started applying it in almost every equation possible. The fake mathematics of complex numbers can be easily found out when you compare them quantitatively. For example, 4 is greater than 3, we all know that. But when you write i along with it, it becomes meaningless. It is neither greater nor smaller. In fact, it cannot be compared. One more funny example that I can give you is that it is possible to prove 1 equals minus 1 if you apply the theory of complex numbers and it's really entertaining. This clearly shows that the concept of complex numbers or imaginary numbers is completely wrong. It is a fake mathematics. But now the question is, what is the square root of minus 1? To know that answer, you have to understand where the mistake happened. The negative sign can be represented as a subtraction and also as a negative symbol. The mistake happened when you mixed up this negative sign as a symbol and also a subtraction, creating a great confusion. Let me give you an example. Consider this number line. Towards the right side of zero, we have all the positive numbers. And towards the left side, we have all the negative numbers. Now if I question you, what is the square root of 4? Then you can easily say it's 2. But if I say, what is the square root of minus 4? Then logically it should be minus 2. But you cannot say that. And do you know why? Because you mixed up this negative sign as a symbol and also as a subtraction, which created a great confusion. For a moment, let us replace this negative sign with hashtag. And now if I ask you what is the square root of hashtag 4, then you can easily say it's hashtag 2, because you have no problem with the sign. This negative sign in the number line is just a symbol. It is not subtraction. Let me give you a practical example of such. Consider the focal length of a thin lens. For a converging lens, the focal length is positive. And for a diverging lens, the focal length is negative. This positive and negative is just an assumption. Practically, there is no such thing called as positive or negative for a lens. For easy calculation, we consider a sign, depending on the front side or the back side of the lens. But if we consider the magnification of a lens, then all such assumptions disappear. There is no positive or negative for magnification. We only consider the amount or the magnitude. This clearly shows that we have 
mixed up this negative sign as a symbol and also as subtraction. It is true that complex numbers have been a part of mathematics history for centuries, but there is no shame in admitting that it is nothing but a fake mathematics. It has no existence in the real world. It is because of a mistake in one of the rules of multiplication. We are all human beings. We all make mistakes. But it's never too late. Mistakes can be corrected. We have already wasted centuries believing that complex numbers exist. Let's not waste any more time. Let's correct what we have done wrong. And it depends upon you when and how you want to correct it. I really wonder why so many great mathematicians could not figure out this small mistake for centuries. Well, I discovered it during an exam of mathematics. And if I remember correctly, I was then 14 years old and in 8th standard. But I kept it secret and remained silent for such a long time because I was not even sure mankind is ready to accept the truth.